Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with Zither Music by Anton Karras. A short while ago, I decided to pay a visit to Greece. I've always been interested in odd objects, preferably the expensive, easily portable sort, and that's why sculpture isn't normally my line. This time, however, I was making an exception. I had my eye on something, and I wanted to have my hands on it, too, so I went to Greece. Unfortunately, art wasn't the only bug that bit me there. Stick around, I'll tell you about it. What you have, you have measles. Ridiculous. I can't have measles. I've already had measles. Measles are what kids have. I don't have measles. You have measles. I must inform the public health authorities. Fortunately, down in my office here in the hotel, I have a quarantine sign. I'll have to put the sign up. You're in quarantine. Now, listen, Doc. You I've... are in quarantine. Do we want a measles epidemic all over the entire port of Theorus? We do not. You are in quarantine. That's how it began. In room 34, on the second floor of the Hotel Olympus in the port of Theorus, outside of Athens in Greece. Shouldn't happen to a dog, but it was happening to me, Harry Lyne. After the hotel doctor had left the room, I was in an absolute fury. I even kicked a small shoe all the way from the couch to the window. It was too much. Measles. The doctor said something about a public health officer. I intended to tell that public health officer plenty. Why don't you keep your measles germs under control? What's the idea of letting a perfectly respectable individual catch some confounded kid's disease and be clapped to... Come in! And furthermore, if you'd only use a little DDT around this sinking board, we could... Did I beg your pardon? I may come in. What? Please. Well, certainly not. You may not come in. This room is quarantined. Oh, wonderful. Quarantined. How absolutely splendid. Why is there no sign on the door? Well, there hasn't been time, and you aren't allowed to come in. What have you got? Measles. Go on. Go oh, on. Get oh, me. you mustn't touch me. I've never had measles. Well, go on. Get out of here. No. You cannot send me out. Now, listen. No, no. Please listen to me. If you send me out there in that hall again, I'll be killed. Oh, come on. Well, I'm not feeling so good, and I don't want any of these... Oh, whatever it is, South Balkan romanticism. Excuse me, just run along. That's a good girl, please. You want proof? Proof? Proof of what? Not to beat it. A public health officer is on his way here, and in a will minute... Will you come next door, will you? Why should I come next door? To look at the proof that you must give me sanctuary here, behind your quarantine sign. Are you kidding? Quick, quick, before the doctor comes. Follow me. Now. Wait. Make sure there's no one in the... Oh, come on now. Cut it out. You see? Right next door to your suite. There, look. Spread eagled in the middle of the room on the floor lay a man. His head had nearly been cut off. You see? Now, believe me. Yes, you will take me in behind your quarantine sign? Quick, let's get out of here. Back in my room, she sat tense in her chair, but only her eyes showed her fear. She couldn't have been more than 25 or 6. Her hair was reddish gold. Her face was... Well, I couldn't think about how lovely she looked. She might even have been the one who cut that man's throat. 
Okay. Names are a good place to start. Mine is Harry Lyme. What's yours? I'm called Andrea. Andrea. Okay, Andrea, did you do it? That in there? Oh, no. Why don't I call the police? Oh, no, no, you can't do that. Well, tell me what it's all about, then. I'll judge whether or not I should call the police. You're an American, not a tourist? Uh, no, no, I'm an art lover. Never mind that. Now, 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 tell me. An art lover? Yes, that's right. Oh, tell me, Mr. Lyme. What do you know about Greek politics? Greek politics? Nothing. I mean, why? Oh, well, let me tell you. Go ahead. That man in there. Yes? He was called Gregor. Well? I was to give him certain papers. Huh? Documents proving that Greece was to be attacked. What? You may well be astonished. Well, it was announced yesterday on the radio. But I, 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 I never, never knew that. Where can I hide? Hide? The bathroom. That, come on. Bathroom. Get in that door, quick. Coming? Porter, sir. Oh, Porter, good. Uh, With the sign, you're at place to put on the door. Sign? Oh, with the sign for the door, yes. The uh, doctor has me to beg it. Yes, thanks. Uh, just hang it there. You uh, didn't need to knock. Yes. Uh, uh, no, sir. No. Uh, I'm sorry if I disturb no, you. No, not at all. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I... Uh, was, oh, I uh, see you have a lady visitor, sir. <clears throat> uh, who? A lady visitor? What nonsense. How could I? I'm in quarantine. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, what gives you an idea like that, that I have a lady? The lady's sir. handbag on the mantel, sir. The lady's handbag on the wall. Good day, sir. I will attend to the sign on the door. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, he's gone. Who was it? Oh, just some kind of a hotel porter with a quarantine sign. He didn't need to come in for that. I know, but he did. Why did he come in? If all he wanted was to... I don't... He wanted to see if I was here. Oh, stop it. He's at the hotel porter. I tell you. You don't understand. Oh. Now what? I left my purse on the mantle. Sure, and he saw it. Please, Mr. Lyme. I've got to think. Now they must know I'm here. By now they must know. Oh, if only I knew which... Oh. She sat her head in her hands, thinking. Things were coming a little fast for me. That man next door, that at least was a fact. But her story, what was going on? I couldn't she go straight to the cops with her? Hey, Andrea. Hmm? What's wrong with taking a paper to the police? Please, Honey. please, I'm trying to think. Okay. Oh, my goodness. This time, take your pocketbook, will you? Oh. One minute. Yes. I am the public health officer. Oh. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Almost evening. Yes, good yes. evening. Good evening. I am coming in. Uh, uh, yes, please do. I am being Dr. Papa Nicolos. Uh, Dr. Papa, Papa Nicolos. Sir. My name. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, yes. Please to take your coat, your tie, your shirt. All off. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. Here we go. Well, I'm supposed to have his measles, you know. Is, uh... A contagion disease. Yes, yes. Very. Please, sir. What's the matter? Why the sniffing, old man? You use perfume. I smell perfume. Well, maybe I like the smell of perfume, old man. <laughs> What's that got to do with my measles? Look, you're a public health officer? No. Yes. Yes. And your job is... Uh, to prevent the spread of an epidemic. To prevent. And uh, he cracks about perfume. I'm sorry. Every man has his taste. <laughs> <laughs> Say, ah. Uh, I've already said, ah. Uh, just tell me how long do I have to be in quarantine, please, old man? Please, please. Leaving me look. Cuff? No. Right light bothering you? No. Feeling like a cold? No. German measles. German measles. Good, good. May clear up when you noticing first the rash? When I'm noticing the rash? Well, the day yes. before yesterday, I noticed mm -hmm. the rash. May before. clear up tomorrow. May clear up tomorrow. Stay, Stay in tomorrow. quarantine. Stay in quarantine. Okay. My car. Call me. Uh, that's all? What is else? What is else? Well, I could leave tomorrow. Or... Could be, possibly. Well, well, how about that? Well, good though. I presume. Oh, oh, you presume. Oh, I know. I suppose being Greek, you hate all Americans now, don't you? Ever Please this... hate America? Yeah. Why? Since we stopped sending you military aid yesterday. Who telling you a story that, like this? Stop me sending military <laughs> Never. The Americans are ridiculous. No, wait just a Goodbye. Thank you. Is that true? You're sure? 
The Americans are still. What's the secret why they speak so in the whispering? Please. Okay, old man, you're quite sure the Americans have not said they will stop sending arms to Greece? Never, never! Ridiculous! <laughs> Goodbye. Andre, uh... Who was it? There's a man who told me that you lied when you said the Americans had stopped sending military aid to Greece. Yes. This is a public health officer, my dear Andrea. I'd like you to know that I always suspected your story. I never believed it, and I am now going to... What? What are you going to do? Call the cops and tell them about this Gregor, if that's his name, which I doubt. Now, let go. I want to get to the phone. Oh, no, please, Harry. You mustn't. Please, please. What was that? Get back. Back. Back from the window. Now, what is this? They're shooting me here. From the room across the street. See? The window curtain, third floor. What is this? They can't. Get down. Get down. Oh, oh, get curtain. Down. Now that it's, it's getting dark. See, Harry? Now then, you were saying... Those two bullets. And the plaster. Over here. I believe you said you were going to call the cops. Well, not now. Oh, now I'm calling room service. Oh, I want a drink. Also food. I'm hungry. Yes, food. What is it? Oh, I keep forgetting. You're sick. Measles. <laughs> uh, what's the joke? <laughs> you should be in bed. What's the matter? I think that you did cut that man's throat. Oh, me. You lied to me. Oh, Who is he? I... Who killed him and why? You... you don't believe me. All right. You... You really didn't give me time to think of a proper story. Now I guess I'll have to tell you the truth. And I did so want not to. Go on. First, the dinner. Why should I give you more time? Mm. Well, well, maybe it's because when I look at you, I can't believe that you could be involved in anything evil. Not even when bullets come in through my window. <laughs> You're very sweet, Harry. No, I'm going to call room service. I'm very hungry. Need enough for two. We'll talk about Gregor after we've eaten. Harry Lyme returns in just a moment. Was it my fever? From the measles? Was it the cocktails? Was it Andrea? The look she'd give me every now and then? Or was it all three? I don't know. By the time we put the tray and the empty dishes back in the hall, I was getting to the point where I could forget every now and then that man in the room next door. Those two pockmarks in the plaster where bullets had been buried. No? No. What were the questions you... Oh, I'm so sleepy. Question number one, who was Gregor? Question number two, who killed him? Three, why? Now, come on. One, he was my lover's valet. Oh? Two, my husband killed him, I think. Three, he killed him because he knew that Gregor was helping me to run away to join my lover. Oh. What's the matter? Well, I'm, I was thinking... You mean so then he bribed the hotel porter to find out where you were, decided you were here, hired a room across the street, took a look over here, and then decided that I was your lover, is that Alexander's it? Alexander's new sight. Uh, and then fired two shots at me. And a poor shot. You must be very jealous. Morbid. Pathological. Mm. This is another lie, isn't it? Isn't it? For the truth, that's to prevent him from coming right in here and shooting me point blank, and you too. Hey, listen, will you? Andrea, you're treating it like a joke. My gosh, I'm going to go... Now what? Well, I'm going next door. I'm beginning to think that Gregor was a vaudeville prop, that no one's been killed. The way you act about it, I can't Harry, even... come back here. Are you crazy? Listen to me. So long as that son is on In your the door... Time? They won't enter. They won't? Who won't? And if they do... Hey. Put that away. Where did you get that? It has six cartridges in the chambers. 
And I have 30 or so more in this little box. They won't come in tonight. Go to bed. Go to sleep. You mean you're going to sit up here all night? I'll have plenty of time to catch up on my sleep tomorrow. Oh, what happens tomorrow? A ship comes into the port. A ship comes into the port? To the dock, which you can see from your window. If you want to give my husband another shot at you. When the signal comes from that ship, I will leave. Are you serious about that story of a lover and a jealous husband? <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, it <laughs> yes, it's incredible. Of course, it's a lie, but at least I can believe it before I could believe the others. So? could never be mixed up with red agents and secret documents and espionage ring. Not you. You're no fun for town. I can tell. I said you were sweet. Hmm, Harry. Hmm? Go to bed. Go to sleep. You are sick. Don't worry anymore. It'll be all right. And I'm sorry that I've put all my troubles in your lap. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm you fever and the cocktail. Sure. You sleep. I'll be awake. Nothing more will happen tonight. Good night. Oh, wake me. Wake me up if anything starts to happen. I promise. <laughs> You, I'm sorry. Where were you? Down to the dock. The ship I oh, was... Oh, you mean your lovers arrived? Is that it? You don't believe me yet, do you? Five o'clock. Give me that gun. You take a nap. I'll sit up over it. I might take you up on that, Harry. Good. She gave me the gun. She was asleep almost immediately, almost before I turned the light out. In sleep, she was even lovelier. I stared out of the window into the door, and I could see the ship. Some crates on the pier next to her. Round seven, some longshoremen started loading the crates into the ship. 7.30 or so. Oh, oh, you startled me. What are you looking at? I don't think I'll... Which one is your doll boy down there? Oh, come on, Andrea. What, what's it all about? Level with the... Why was Gregor killed? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe he talked too much. Talked about what? I wish I knew, Harry. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Those curtains are... Huh? the way, yes. What? They moved just a minute ago. Now they're into the bathroom. Uh, yes, who is it? Pop your telephone, sir. Oh, it's Dr. Papanopoulos. Are you okay? Okay. Come in. Hey. You're not Dr. Papanopoulos or whatever his name is. His assistant. He sent me over instead to give you medicine. Medicine? The penicillin. If you would roll up your sleeve. Yes, sir. For measles, then it's all right. We yes. cannot lift the quarantine unless you get this injection, Mr. Lyon. Oh, well, okay. What's, what's that in there? Just alcohol to what? Just cost the needle on the bed, then. I, uh, Quickly. I, I... Wasn't a bad idea, pretending to be a doctor. But on the Andrea, other hand... Andrea, I'm not sure that you're making a... Uh, Take a sheet, Harry. Tie his hands. Countess, you'll never be able to... Up or I'll shoot your teeth in. This gun has a silencer, too, you see. Tie him good, Harry. The pillowcase for a gag. Listen to me, Lyme. You do what she says and you'll be a dead man before another hour is out. One more word and I'll shoot and I mean that. If I knew why I was doing this, is he your husband? Him. <sighs> now, the pillowcase, quick. It's getting later than... Quick! The signal's gone up. On the ship, Harry. If you're worried as to why you're doing this, just remember what would have happened to you if I hadn't come in this room. Smell that. What is it? Morphine. Enough to kill. Okay, he's quiet for a while. Is your bag packed, Harry? You're all set, but I... What? What about the man across the way when you... when you came out on the street? That's all figured out. What did you think I was doing at five this morning? Come on. <laughs> She 
led the way to the freight elevator at the cellar, how to deliver entrance into an alley, down the alley through a gate and wooden fence, through two backyards, out through another fence, and the corner. Harry, you here? Through the shed. And then there we were. A gang plank right in front of us. We scrambled up. A man in a dirty blue uniform stood waiting. Oh, Countess, you are pumped. And this is Gagor? Captain, you'll never know how glad I was to hear you say that. Everything's ready? Your crates are aboard, yes. And the envelope for you. He started to hand her an envelope there for us. Perhaps just to make sure, we should first make sure that the um, confinement is as ordered. Most certainly. You there, crowbar, rip this open. One should be enough. A rascally looking seaman prized a plank loose from a big crate inside. Satisfactory? Seems to be. I could see the dull gleam of gunmetal. They look like machine guns. The envelope. Here you are. Thank you, Captain. And you'll drop us off at Crete as agreed. Gregor, you'll wake me just before we land in Crete. Hmm? Captain, if I don't see you... Always a pleasure to do business with you, Countess. <laughs> Gregor. Yeah. Do you mind if I call you Gregor, Harry? Well, why? Just for a few minutes more, till we land in Crete. What's the matter, Harry? Oh, I hope this boat sinks. The guns, you mean? And you, too. And me. And your blood money. I suppose that's what was in the envelope, the payoff, huh? Yes. Half yours, of course. Unless it's counterfeit. The last installment always is when they can get away with it. Why aren't you registering a complaint with the captain? With your six-shooter, hmm? I don't think it would be a good idea for me to complain, Harry. He might decide to examine my crates more carefully if I complain about his money. What? He might find out that the ammunition I sold him doesn't fit his guns. I'm a woman, Harry. I don't like killing. This time I can tell. You're speaking the truth, aren't you? It's always a pleasure to double-cross killers. Oh. Oh, poor Gregor. Uh, Gregor, is that me this time? No, Gregor. The real one. He always talked a lot. You know, I was never sure until the last moment whether he'd been killed by the people who didn't want us to sell these worthless guns or by our employers who discovered they were worthless. Well, then, when he came out of the boat this morning... There was always a possibility. Oh. But when the captain greeted you as Gregor, it was quite a load off. Oh, my my goodness. Yes. (laughs) I've become quite cynical because of all the treachery and double dealing I've seen. Even you, you were double crossed. Me? When? But quite honestly, I always try to make up for it. For example, to make up for it this time, I think I shall present you with the Order of the Cross of Rubiola. What's that? Rubiola. Something that's common to both of us. We both had it. Although I told you I hadn't. Rubiola, Rubiola, it's all riddles. Still riddles. No, measles. Measles? If you'd lean down just a bit, I'll confer the order on you. Oh, thanks. Now let's uh, try that one. Until we wound up in Crete, I felt the time had come to let Andrea know that my love for art wasn't entirely, uh, <clears throat> platonic. We decided that, uh, as we had too much in common, we might try a business partnership. Andrea had, I felt, a great natural talent which needed developing on the right lines. Unfortunately, however, the partnership didn't last long. In fact, just long enough for one big deal. I found out that Andrea had just a little too much in common with me. She believed in a hundred percent of everything, including the profits. Still looking for Andrea and the profits. Maybe the Greeks had a word for her, too. So long now.